you know, he always had the, uh, the fenders only on the rear tires, not on the front. And I uh, figured maybe he just bought one pair, pulled these off. I got an interesting crack cut all across there. So we're going to be redoing this wheel well. And then uh, I'm opening this up. This was just surface rust, but it was just paper thin. And this is, uh, this is the typical scout rust area here for the Terras and the Travelers. They extended 18 inches uh, that they extended these from the Scout 2. It's prime rusting area. Another handy item is this uh, magnetic layered craftsman here. Just basically plastic wrapped uh, magnet, but keeps all your parts out of the dirt, lug nuts, screws, attaches right to the side of your truck. Going with the uh, black wheels, let me know what you think. Alright, well, get the top piece cut off there, folded it down, and this is what we got inside. Inside saw, just a little surface rust. We'll have to uh, brush that down and I already vacuumed off part here, but I gotta vacuum. This is all just dirt accumulated through spaces and gaps in the body from the factory and accumulates in there and then just rusts away. Alright, I know she look, kinda looks like a disaster now, but We'll see if we can get put it back together. I uh, got this open, got it cleaned up, got uh, inner piece that's coming through, so I'm just going to cut that out. Probably put angle iron across there. And I went ahead and uh, I'm just going to open up these wheel wells. You can see my hand, the actual inner wheel well is up there. So I'm going to trim the outside to match, cut this piece off, and then try and reattach them right at the top where they meet. The only issue was this was all Bondo that I just broke off and there's a piece that was Bondoed over there so I'm going to have a couple filler pieces to make that line up. But uh, we're going to knock this inch off the inside wheel well. That'll give better room uh, for the 35s to come all the way over. Uh, at least not interfering with the fender. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, we're gonna further our trimming here. We're gonna cut that whole bottom lip all the way off. All right, as I'm taking everything apart, everything's getting labeled in individual bags, and then I'm actually gonna squirt a little PB blaster in there to help loosen up some of the surface rust, and I'll just reuse the same bolts. All right, well, I just kept going. In order to take the fender off, I had to take the door off. So I've got the door off, sitting right here. Fenders up against there, and it's solid. There's not any rust in there, which is great. So that's also the paint scheme I'm thinking about. Is desert tan. It's hard to tell when you get up close, but it's actually got a textured rock finish on it, and then bed lining on the bottom but this is uh solid got one coat of the uh, the rust fix on just a little surface rust up here all right boys and girls we're getting there front grills back on fenders back on tires back on well she hasn't been started in about a week or so so Thought I get her started up. The door back on. 
Lines up pretty good. What we'll probably do is put a, a light coat of paint right here. And uh, I can see I got a little rubbing right here, so I might have to move the bottom out just a little bit for the door. But uh, just pretty good. The hood sanded down. I drilled a hole from the back and pounded this big old den out the best that I could. There's a few more spots that could be pulled out. Now, this is going to be my first experience with Bondo. Not really much of a Bondo guy. And I really don't care if there's a couple dents in here, but I would like to practice using body filler. But uh, this isn't quite ideal because these gaps are a little bit bigger than you'd want to fill body filler anyway. But we're going to give it a shot just for practice. Well, if you've ever used it, you have a hardener and you have the filler. And uh, we're going to mix these up till they're about the same color and go fill it in and see what happens. I would tell you the Bondo brand scrapers on here there's a region there that color when you have a perfect mix it, it should actually well before it dries when you're mixing it it should actually be the Bondo color of the scraper that knows you have a good mix of uh, filler and hardener all right well we got the uh, bed liner on the underside got the sanded down a little overcoat thick coat of uh, primer you can still see I got a little bit of sanding to do. I didn't pull that dent out very well. They do a great job Bondo, but that's what it's about. Just learning and practicing. Alright, we're going to try to use the poor patch. The poor 15. See if it'll stay flexible enough to fill in these cracks. Right, got the top upside down now this is brushed on ham right I didn't use the uh, spray paint this just happens to be sitting here um, and it's a lot thicker and it, uh, it actually dries a lot harder and I like it a lot problem is the black brush on isn't as black as the spray uh, I was initially gonna do this for the outside because I think it would hold up a lot better and um, gosh you know it's just not the the color I was thinking of so I'm probably going to be doing the top in tan as well. And uh, take you over here. Here's kind of what we're looking at. I'll get some other pictures to roll in. But uh, part of the deglossification here is I've done um, truck liner on all this, the both side mirrors. I truck lined uh, with that Rust-Oleum spray the... Um, the light coverings. I haven't decided whether I'll leave this uh, tan yet. The paint doesn't really like to stick because it's actually rubber underneath this. So I might have to take a couple coats on there. Now, I'm not sure how well this is perceived, but this is two coats of uh, flat tan. I'll show you what I'm using. This is the Krylon Camouflage Ultra Flat Series. Um, two good coats of the tan, and then I'm coming back with this sandy textured paint on here and I'm really not sure how long that'll last on here um, you really kind of have to put it on a little bit thicker so that the adhesive that's in it is almost a clear adhesive and that is what's sticking all these granulars to it so I'll uh, we'll give it a wash once we get the top on today it's supposed to rain tomorrow and then here's just the the lower section here is that rust-oleum bed liner and it's not real grippy uh, I had a gentleman contact me and ask me what brand I was using and um, testing out and, and again it's not a thick roll-on this is just out of a can spray so it's going to be a little bit thinner you won't be able to get the large granules um, out of a spray can no matter what brand it is uh, but I initially wanted this line a little bit lower but for my body repairs back here and don't mind the Bondo I was just playing with uh, curing times and stuff on there but um, I'm not going to Bondo the middle of there but we'll see how well my body lines come out but that way it'll help hide that body line um, a weld job there it'll come across and become bed liner and then it'll be tan above there once I get that done 
Well, these are the two products we're using. We're using the camouflage, and again, we'll see how this holds up. Uh, flat paint, flat paint generally um, picks up a lot of grease and dirt. If I'm working on my truck and I happen to reach up here and I get greasy hands, it'll show really bad. So, who knows if I'll like it or not. Um, but, uh, yeah, and it's also the fusion paint that's made for plastic, so we'll see how it goes. But this is the traditional ultra flat that you usually see. And I usually keep one can of each, but uh, with this project I should have less paint if I ever need to kind of uh, take all the gloss off everything and go to a little camouflage. It'll take a whole lot less paint to get there um, with this new body style or new paint style. And then this is instead of going actual camouflage pattern, uh, multicolored textured. And I know you can't really see that, but it's basically like sand color. And I'll show you what I mean when the, the texture goes on. You kind of have to do it pretty thick in order for those little granules to get sunk in the adhesive spray.